During the early months of 1843, we find Verdi in Venice, together with Francesco Maria Piave, a Venetian poet and librettist. It's beautiful, even in this weather. Ah, Venetia, Venetia, fatal gift of beauty. Loving her is an endless duty. Let's go to the Florian, where it's warm. Oh, it's biting cold. Uh, spiteful, spiteful. <laughs> Hernani was based on a drama by Victor Hugo. Let's take another look at the Hernani. Yes, now then. After Hernani, Piave was to write the librettos of seven other operas for Verdi. What have you had, gentlemen? Uh, for me, hot chocolate. The usual, yes. Coffee? Hmm? Coffee, huh? Ah, yes, coffee, coffee. Uh, coffee. And some lady fingers, you know, though. Piave was a jolly man, and he wasn't at all a bad poet. If anything, he was a victim of Verdi's temperament. Verdi would take his librettos, tear them apart, and reassemble them. can't sustain it. Here, look. Where's the woman who can sing one after another? A cavatina, a duet, and a grand finale, huh? We'd have to cut? Cut with a hatchet. Well, then cut. Cut uh, away. Brevity is strength. It's a fact. Never say with two words what you can say with one. Oh, I'm afraid, maestro. I'm overabundant in every sense. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> now put this into verse. Two lines, no more than two. Excuse and me. And make them rhyme. Uh, gentlemen. Ah, lady. Even in Verdi's day, it was fashionable to make fun of Piave's verses. But many modern critics find those librettos ideal, perfect for their purpose, which was to give Verdi the base he needed for his towering, overwhelming music for which he insisted upon you a theatrical text. A theatrical text, or how else can I say it? Uh, look, a word, sometimes just one word, flashes like lightning across the whole action, never diluted by useless words. You understand? Absolutely. Besides being a good poet. No, no, not a poet, a poet aster. Piave was a good-hearted, simple, straightforward friend. He was the first of a group of loyal companions, almost devoted slaves, who bowed always to Verdi's tyrannical nature. On March 9th, 1844, Hernani was given at the Fenice. Hernani's a beautiful opera. But Verdi's operas are so numerous, he wrote 26, that it's impossible to illustrate all of them. Hernani, too, was a great success. A success that placed Verdi among the leading Italian composers. And the word Italian is appropriate, too, because all his countrymen still today feel that Verdi was the first to express that vague but genuine and profound national feeling, that yearning for freedom and unification. And his music, the language of the whole country, was ideal for expressing it. In Hernani, and this is fundamental when discovering Verdi, it's the first time he studies his characters and their personalities. He studies man. His keen understanding of human nature helped to create unforgettable people. In the next five years, he will write at least six or seven operas that reveal this greater perception. 
Years of such hard work that he called them my years of confinement, the galley years. Emanuele, copy this too. He lived in Milan. In Via Monte Napoleone 260. In his house now, there was a young man who had come from Buceto to study. He lived next door to Verdi and could be summoned with a whistle from the window. Emanuele Muzio was to be Verdi's only pupil. Like Piave, he was simple and good-hearted. He wasn't particularly talented, but his loyalty and modesty meant much to the profoundly lonely Verdi of those years. To the bustle and chaos of Milan, Muzio brought a touch of Buceto. Actually, he came from a town near Buceto, on the misty banks of the Po. Like Verdi, as a child, Muzio had sung in church. Barezzi had taken the boy under his wing, helped him study, and sent him to Verdi. With Muzio, Verdi could relax and be himself. Muzio, C-sharp, C-sharp, you chuckhead. What should it be, huh? Oh. Ah. No, no, I'll get it. Oh, thank you. The lesson didn't last very long that day. At a glance, the maestro caught still other errors. Ah. <clears throat> Many music students would give as much as three talents per lesson to have Signor Maestro Verdi as their teacher. But he has always refused. Except for one poor devil like me. Good. Yeah, that's good. That's all for today. <laughs> Emanuele. Hmm? At times, he'd also offer me breakfast. Emanuele, huh? your bun. Uh. Barezzi paid Muzio's expenses in Milan. And as he did with Verdi, Barezzi also bought the boy clothes. Hmm? <laughs> I don't want to soil it. My maestro has such a noble soul, such generosity, a heart, a heart so great that it could only be compared to yours, Signor Barezzi, the two most generous hearts in the Regularly, world. two or three times a week, Muzio wrote to Barezzi, who carefully preserved the letters, invaluable documents that tell of Verdi's day-to-day -day life. Everything is Verdi. Il Signor Maestro Verdi. Verdi comes alive in those letters. No! 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 As he stages a revival of I Lombardi. Did you hear that? Incredible! It's not possible! All that shouting! I don't want shouting! Don't you understand? I've said it a thousand times. No shouting! No, hushed, little voice, no voice, no voice! It's late, it's night, you understand? I've told you as much. Play. Now remember, it's night, and you're brigands, you're cutthroats, murderers. Uh, why do you play while I'm explaining? Night, dark, night, mystery, you understand? Mystery. Go on, play, 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 play. Non per il nostro segno di chi morbiglia qua sale son son non ve buio che il vale He moves like someone in despair singing and thumping his foot You'd think he was playing the pedals of an organ I hope you have understood Now we can rehearse Beads of sweat drop as he walks he perspires so much Yet a quick glance of his at the chorus or the orchestra is like a bolt of lightning.
Eventually, Muzio became Verdi's helper. Maestro. Eh? The violins doubled up? Yes, with the violas. And remember, the French horns go into that piece. We use the same table now. And frankly, things couldn't be better. In this period, almost without a break, Verdi wrote five operas. I Dui Foscari, Alzira, Giovanni d'Arco, Attila, and I Masnadieri. And Muzio's letters continued to reach Barezzi week after week. A true monument of naive, worshipping affection. <laughs> 